Hey guys, I wanted to take a minute to show you guys how I kind of make um, some standard patterns that I've seen that look good on the hoop. So I tend to use Pixlr. Um, so here's the main web page. And then I scroll down to the um, editor right here, launch web app. And then um, a good idea that Cassie had mentioned was to open some existing Hyperion patterns. So you could always open them from um, here and you could just click checkers and then make different colors and edit those. Um, I'm going to create a new image and show you guys how to do that. So this can just be um, just period one. Um, I like to start with something around 40 and then go to about 120 is, is okay. Just gives you a good um, template that can be repeated on the hoop. So this is the layout of Pixlr. Um, it's kind of like paint mixed with a little photoshoppy things. So here you can add different layers. So I'm going to tell you an easy way to go about um, adding some cool effects. So here is a rainbow gradient. So what I just did is clicked on this and then here's the gradient. You can click that. I'm going to click rainbow and you can just drag corner to corner add a little rainbow here is add a new layer so I'm going to add a new layer and then I'm just going to make this layer black and I'll show you what I'm going to do you can then <clears throat> sorry I have a cold um, use the brush this is how I made the star patterns and you can make the brush pretty small I made it you can make it 11 but I think something around like 8 would be better um, for the diameter because 60 would be you know one third the size of the hoop if not more and then you can erase different stars in the gradient and it has the gradient appear through so this is just a quick way that I made some of the stars um, turn up different colors. So that would be that one. You can also delete a layer by just hitting that delete. Um, you can do all kinds of things with this kind of, oops, this kind of technique. I like it. This is how I made some of the butterflies. I just kind of drew them in. Um, so I'm going to make that black and then you can even change your brush up here um, you can do squares and just you know scatter them around um, anything bold looks best bold with black always shows up the best um, you can brush in change it to one lines so this will create a little it's very twiggly chaser on the hoop so you can always do it that way a lot of people have been asking about resizing images and personally <clears throat> I think it's a good starting point so say I wanted to do a smiley face I can just find a smiley face here on Google and I'm going to do just this one and drag and drop it to my desktop. And then what I would do is file, open image, and then find it here. And now it's 300 by 300 pixels. So what you do is image image size and typically the best thing that shows up on the hoop is anything below like 35 by 35 pixels um, that's what I've seen kind of 
shows up while you're hooping and maintains the image. So I could do that, and then when I view and zoom it in, it looks fuzzy. So what I normally do is a little bit more intense than what some people might want to do. I like to clean up the image, and I also like space in between my images. So I'll change the canvas size and make it about 42 by 42 just to give it a little extra borders and then you can um, you have to unlock by double clicking the background layer and then you can move it around what I would do is I would make the background black it shows up best on the hoop um, and then I would do this so as you can see it looks okay the way it is right now but I like to go in and really touch up the image and clean up the colors. So here's the paint tool. Change the brush size usually to about a one just to get a good uh, control over it. And just fill in the white spots. You can add a white border if you'd like. Uh, it's a judgment call on the shape. How you want to make your circle. It's hard to make a circle out of squares. But figured we'd try. And then you can do it that way. Um, you can color in the eyes, make them a little cleaner. Just like that. And the more bold the color, the better it will show up. This is the color selector, so you click on this and this pops up. You can choose any color in the picture and have it be the same by just clicking the picker and clicking on that. And then, so if I don't like how my eye went like that, I can get it back. You can also... Um, See how repeated images will show up on a hoop? I do this sometimes, canvas size, and then I multiply it times three. So, let's just try it like this. And then, make it big. And what you can do is select this much of your image, and then hit edit, copy, and paste. And then you can just put your image next to each other to see what the repeated image might look like. This would work something with something better that um, you're trying to make seamless so you can see if the pattern ma matches up. And then you can crop it back because you know that it's going to repeat to its real original size. Okay, I'm going to show you one more technique that I use that's pretty easy to do. I'm just going to do a new image, starting with um, 26, because I want it to be even. I'm going to repeat it on both sides and go by 100 so I can see what a couple of repeats down would be like. I'm just going to try and get a quarter and zoom in so I can see it a little better. I'm going to do a gradient. This is the gradient that I just made. Um, you can click on any gradient here and just delete colors that you don't want if um, you like it better. And you can add in colors by just clicking like that and then hit the color selector and say I want it that way. So here's my gradient. I can spread them out so it can be whatever style I want. And then I'm just going to do it diagonally. And then you can copy and paste it and have it again as a new layer. So here it's the exact same. But what I want is for it to be flipped so I can make like a kind of chevron pattern. 
So I'm going to take this layer and flip it horizontally to see how it kind of has that V. And then what I'm going to do is merge those two so that they're the same. So when I go to select them, I can select them this way. I might have to move it up a little bit. And then copy and paste. And I have another layer with the same copy of this pattern. Then if I hit layer, flip vertical, it'll repeat it. So now if I put this on the hoop this way, first I have to crop it because you don't want it that white. Um, it'll be a seamless pattern. So there we go. Now that would look cool just by itself. But if I go to filter, I might have to merge these layers first so that it does it to everything. Merge visible. Go to filter. There's all these really neat things that I can do to it. I can add noise and it pixelates it like that. Add it up like that. Um, I can diffuse it, which is kind of similar. Um, I like this half tone. I've done this with a few of them. And if it's a bigger pattern, it looks better because those squares are a little bit. It takes all the darker ones and adds a darker, whatever this color is, dot into it, and then it lightens through. Um, it's good for an energy saving mode because it adds some black into the pattern. And then you can pixelate it and it'll just make it big dots. You can... Pointalize is one of my favorites. Um, squares. So if I crop out the right side, it'll just be squares in that pattern. And do large circles. Again, I would crop out that side, but these large circles show up really well. You can do small circles and then dots. I would do this for something a little bigger than 24 by 62 pa uh, pixels because the gradient pattern would show up nicer. Um, you can also add like a swirl effect, which looks really neat. Um, you can just kind of change the pattern around, swirl it around, and then you can also do this kaleidoscope effect and change that, and it'll just edit the the colors, whichever way. A little psychedelic twist. And if you do adjustment, you can make a bunch of patterns out of one by just hitting hue and saturation and then you can change the colors of this and it'll just take you through a whole bunch of different colors like that so now I have a totally different set of colors and you can just play with each pattern that way so there's just a little tutorial on how I've made some of the ones that I have. I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see what everybody comes up with.